It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Hello neighbors and friends. Hope everyone is doing well out there in YouTube land. Uh, this is a video of a bass guitar that I purchased a long time ago. And if you don't remember the unboxing video that I did of this, here are some pictures of, I guess, part of the unboxing. All right, so hope everyone's doing well out there. And by the way, the backing track that I'm using for this video is done by Mr. B. I will put a link at uh, for his channel at the bottom. And uh, give the guy a like or whatever. I love his music. It's uh, the type of music I like. May not be to your liking, but I like it. So this is the Epiphone. This is the EB3, which means it has a bridge pickup and a uh, set neck on it three-way selector switch, two volumes, two tones. Now I've already removed the plastic off this thing, threw that away, got that out of the way, and now what I want to do is kind of do a basic setup on this thing. And the guy, when I bought this thing, it was bought new from a music store on eBay, and I paid nowhere near the price that uh, uh, this thing would be new. Now. The guy told me that this was basically kind of like the, the store demo, whatever. And it's got some scarf, scuffing on the back of it. I mean, just very, very, like, minor stuff right over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, and I still have to remove the plastic off the back cover. But for something that was the store demo, um, it's in very good shape. No chipping on it, no anything, no scratches on it, the top of it, it's pretty clean besides my fingerprints that are all over it but uh, yeah so what I want to do is go into the first step and start tuning this thing so this is step one plug in your guitar into the tuner and you're tuned up a little bit here Check the intonation, which is going to be changed anyways. If it's uh, if it's all set up right now, it's going to be changed. So let's see if the harmonic. Yeah, it's a little sharp. Yeah. Yeah, they're all a little sharp, which doesn't mean anything right now anyways, because that's going to change after I do the rest of the setup on the guitar. So, let's get into part two. Alright, so part two, I want to check the relief in the neck. So I have a capo at the first fret. I'm going to be fretting on the 18th fret, because that is where the body meets the neck on this thing. And... Check my neck over here. It's scratching the string slightly, 
but not raising it at 12,000. So that's exactly where I would set it to. So next step I want to do is to check out the action height at the first fret. So stay tuned. All right. So a long time ago, I was looking online to check out how to do different ways of adjusting your action height at the first fret. So this is a way that I haven't tried myself, but it seems to look like it works pretty damn good. So I'm going to share it with you guys if you don't already know. So basically what I have is a set of feeler gauges and I have a flat edge. I'm using my rocker. So I've already measured this out. I've got a 25 thousandths and a 13 thousandths and it comes out to be 38 thousandths. And you want to place your rocker or your flat edge, straight edge, on top of the first two frets. And you don't want to rock it back and forth or not. You just want to set it on top there nice and flat. Slide your feeler gauges underneath the rocker or your straight edge and they're on top of the fretboard right before that first fret. So I've already measured this out one time already and it comes out to be 38 thousandths between the rocker and the fretboard itself. So after that what you want to do is you want to add 25 thousandths to this. And what I'm going to do is get my 20 thousandths and my five thousands where are you three thousands four thousands five thousands all right so this is bringing me up to sixty three thousands what i want to do is slide this underneath the e string as close as i can to the nut if this will allow me so if I take this and I slide it in, it barely fits, barely fits all the way up to the, the nut. Now if I go down a little bit, I have just a tiny little gap right there. So that's telling me this is a little bit lower than 63 thousandths. Which is fine because if I pluck the string, it's not giving me any fret noise. So if I ended up like thumping the string really hard, it's not going to be any noise at that fret. If you go down any further, say you put uh, between your, find out what your measurement between your fretboard and the top of the fret would be using a straight edge. If you go down any further and you add 20 thousandths to that, chances are, from what I've been reading, you're going to start getting some fret buzz, especially if you like pinch the string or pluck the string really hard. So now I want to go back to my uh, 38 thousandths and do the same thing on the next string. So this E string is basically where it should be. Maybe down just like a couple thousands more. And all right, I'm getting the same thing here as I got at the age, uh, E string. Now, if your fret was not flat up against the fretboard, or if there was some high low spots in it, or if there was something going on with that fret to where it was wavy, uh, it will change by every string so you want to make sure that you're using the right feeler gauges for the job and it's basically 38 thousandths so what i want to do is add 20 thousandths to this making it a 58 thousand so where's my 20 and you want to slide this up against all the way up to the nut underneath it now this one here has got some it's got some room to play so I can end up adjusting that one down lower now again with the 38 thousandths I want to check the other side of the fretboard and again that is the same and with this I want to add 15 thousandths to it let's see 15 thousandths there you are and I'm going to slide that underneath the string all the way up to the nut. And yeah, that's got plenty of room over there. Yeah, that's got to be adjusted as well. So let's get rid of that 15 thousandths and let's check the G string. Get my angle right so I'm not doing anything with this. There you go. And again, this slides in there pretty nice. Now I want to add 10 thousandths to that. Oh, I know it's going backwards. I want 10. 
11. Okay. All right, so this is going to make this 48 thousandths. Slide it. Yeah, I got plenty of room here to go down. Now, they say that on like the low E string and the G string, that if you go on to eight thousandths on the G string, um, that's going to end up making it to where it's going to make noise up against the fret. The same thing if you, you know, only add 20 thousandths instead of 25 thousandths, you can possibly start getting fret noise on that too. So, next thing I'm going to do is end up doing some filing. So, be right back. All right, so I got my nut files ready and I got my other gauges ready. So, I want to start on the G string. And uh, I need the 25, 13, and plus a 10. So I'm going to start loosening this, this up. Move the string out of the way. Got a little tight inside there. And so I've got my 5 nut file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this all the way here. Make sure I put a little pressure on there so they don't spread open. And I'm going to file this going towards. Now when I noticed the string going over there, there wasn't really too much of an angle. It kind of was straight and then dropped down from the back of the, from the back. So I'm a pretty good lip I can see over here. So I'm going to angle that towards. He's got plastic nuts on him, so. <sighs> right when I start feeling it hit that, these feeler gauges, that's when I want to stop. check it with the feeler gauges and I have now I can adjust it down some more thought I was hitting the feeler gauge with the file I guess I wasn't so again, this is a very time-consuming job to do when you're doing nut work. Very tedious work and you want to make sure you do it the right way. You cut too much off and you cause problems. And you feel a big weight on your head Take it how you like it Up there, so I'm going to fix that angle a little bit. Turn it back on there, tighten her up back up to pitch. Oh, that's more acceptable right now. That's very nice. All right, so what I want to do now is go to the next screen and let's see. I need my 25 and my 13. I want to add 15 more to that. 10, 11, 12, 13, or 14, 15. There we go. All right, so let's loosen up this string. Oh, I broke the camera. Sorry about that. Put this out of the way. Oh.
careful you don't go too much in an angle you don't want to cut or scratch the headstock Right now I can slide over, slide right over the feeler gauges into the groove and I got my angle cut as well towards the headstock and the tuner key. Put my string back in there, tighten the pitch. Alright, so I'll take these feeler gauges and as you can see Kind of scratching the feeler gauge a little bit. That's why I'm not using the new ones that I got from Gil. Let's see, slide this in. Oh, I'm gonna go that way. It's too low. Oh, nice, really nice. Exactly where I wanted. Pluck the string hard. And I'm not getting any vibration off of the first fret. All right, so I need 25. And 13, and this time I want to add 20 to it. So I'm going to get my 20 feeler gauge, 20 thousandths that is. Alright, so I got the 25, 13, which makes 38, and add the 20 to it, that makes it to a 58 thousandths. Go right up here, yeah, so then just go down too. Not by much, but it needs to go down. See how tight it was inside there too? That's not supposed to be that way. Alright, so I put my feeler gauges in there. Alright, so I see how much of a look there is. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. There it is, it slides right in without having any problems. Make sure my angle cut is good. Put the string back in. Alright, and see how this goes underneath here. Right on it. This one here, I do want to pitch it downwards a little bit because the angle doesn't look correct. See that kind of tight in there. I shouldn't be cutting anything off of the front, or the bottom of the nut actually. I'm cutting off the front of the nut. Give that angle to that peg head. Good. Now I'm going to check that, so I need a 5,000 to make sure I didn't lower that anymore. Six thousand. And there's a 5. So I'm adding 25,000 to what's already here. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't lower it at all. It still feels the same way as it did before. All right, so I got the angle pitched towards the peg heads. Uh, I lowered the action height. And uh, looks a lot fucking better than what it was before. Sorry about the language. Hey, how's it going? You caught me doing something that I don't normally show on camera. But basically, 
as you can kind of see these fret slots are pretty deep and the rule of thumb is is you want half the string sticking up out of the slot and you want the other half of the string inside of your nut or sitting in your nut slot so what I need to do right now is I need to lower the top of this nut down to get what I'm looking for and basically right now they are very very deep so I've got a file it's a little bit of aggressive file and basically what I'm going to do is skin over the top of the nut going in a pattern where it's kind of like curved and that should help me get the nut slot depth that I'm looking for to where the strings are sitting in the nut but half the string is out of the nut as well. So you want to take your time doing this. It's very easy to cut too much off. Let's see what kind of progress I made here. Get rid of the burrs that are on the edge of the nut over here. I still need to go down some more. Alright, so let's kind of see what kind of progress I made. Now I'm going to go over this nut with some sandpaper and make sure that I have a nice, make sure your nuts are nice and clean, right? So I've moved my tape. Always add more tape to it if I need to, if it's not where I want it. And some tension on these strings. They sit inside the nut. Yeah, so I got right now, on this side of the nut, it's a little bit more than half. So I can either leave it alone or I can file that, this down well. What I'm going to do is next I'm going to take some sandpaper and clean up that nut a little bit, get all the burrs and whatnot off of it. So bear with me here. Alright, so what I have here is a piece of 800 grit sandpaper wrapped around a file. And I'm just going to go and clean up and smooth out any burrs and anything that's on this nut right now. Even on the edges. Try not to get too close to your trust eye cover. Now this is not doing anything to the inside of the slot for the strings, but this is cleaning up burrs and Smoothing out the scratches from the file. As you can see, it's working. Making that nice and smooth. Alright, so. Move some of the burrs off the edge over here, being careful not to sand into the fretboard. Now the strings are loose, it's a good time to oil up the fretboard a little bit. So now what I want to do is take the nut files and go inside a slot and just clean it up. So I'm not going to be cutting it, I'm just going to be cleaning it a little bit. Just getting rid of some of the burrs, that's all. That one. This right here. I'm 
in the last one. Feels smooth, no sharp edges. Kept a little pitch on it with the angle with the nut, and I'm gonna start putting my screen. Think I better give my boy a rest. Just enjoy today. All right, so we got the action height at the first fret done. The strings on the nut are sitting half in and half out of the slots, and. Now I'm going to get the rest of this thing set up and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the action height at the 12th fret and make adjustments on that. Then I want to check out the truss rod, make sure that hasn't changed at all and uh, get this thing done. Alright, so I oiled up the fretboard when the strings were loose. Now I want to check, since it's in tune right now, check the action height at the 12th fret. Now I have a little card here and it says for bass guitars to set at uh, 3.0 or 3.5 millimeters or uh, that's on the low side, the higher side set at 2.8 or 3.3 millimeters. I kind of go my own route with this. So let's see where we're at. Some people say uh, 764 is where you want to be, and I don't quite agree with that. If I can go 564 or 332s, and right now this can go down a little bit, so I need to get a screwdriver, because where you adjust it at is pretty, di pretty different from some of the other guitars. So on this bass, you have three adjustments to make here. So I'm going to turn all these down. Equal turns. And kind of eyeball it to see where it's sitting at. It's a little bit up on this side here. Alright, so let's see where I'm sitting at now. I'm at 332s. So I'm going to plug this in. So I'm going to have to tune her up again. And at the 12th fret on the G string, I'm sitting at 564. So let's see what that is. It's supposed to be in millimeters. So what do they say it to be? Low side is 3.0 to 3.5, and I'm sitting at 2, 2.00. The high side is 2.8 to 3.3 millimeters, and I am sitting at uh, 1.75. Hmm. So let's see if this thing's in tune still. As I lowered it down, it's going to be out of tune. All right, so let's see what the neck is telling me as far as relief goes. Got my key point at the first fret. Uh, feel gauges. Let's get my 12 thousandths here. Twelve. Hold the neck. 
fret on the 18th. I gotta add a little bit of relief to that. So get my Jewish screwdriver out and remove the truss rod cover. Truss rod cover is removed. And this is probably going to be a four mil, more likely. This damn thing works a hell of a lot better for trying to get in there and adjusting your truss rod, I tell you that much. All right. Okay, Let's see where it says as far as tuning goes. Let's see if this changed any. Ah, capo. It changed. That's right where I want it. And I'm going to have to raise this action height a little bit more. So I don't think I'm going to go three, three millimeters. I think I'll take this up to from the two millimeters all the way to the 2.25, 2.25 millimeters. All right, it's 2.25. We have to retune it. that I would call done so there you have it this is the Epiphone let me switch the view a little bit wider all right so this is the Epiphone what I say it was the EB3 bass guitar now what I want to do with it next is kind of go over everything and uh, make sure everything's good um, I did raise it up a little bit on the low side which probably brought me let's see what it brought me on the inches so yeah it brought me up to 764 and I am 332's I can live with that I can live with that a lot it's kind of a nice space um, wasn't that hard to set up you know you got to pay attention to what you do and how you're doing it to make sure that things are done right you don't crack anything chip anything or you know whatever uh, now I gotta set the intonation on this thing since I have my everything else is basically done so that'll be next all right so this is turning out to be a very long video but there's a lot of detail involved in this so right now we're gonna set up the intonation and I've already got the strings in tune uh, I checked the neck relief again everything's fine so let's go ahead and check at the 12th fret. There's the harmonic. Go back a little bit. Oh, wrong screwdriver. Just needs a flathead. Tune it again. Back a little bit more. Two. 
Halloween. Good. Go to the next string, which would be the A string. It's already in tune. Check the harmonic of it. Pretty close. That's also got to go back a little bit. Now changing the nut action height probably can change the intonation a bit by dropping the strings down. them when you pull them back on the saddle. So D string. Go back a little bit too. That's a little sharp. It's very time consuming. Good. Now the G string. Go back a little bit too. No changing the nut action changed the intonation. Go 
A little bit more. forward a little bit more, turned it back too much. I tell you, after working on this nut, these strings seem to move a lot better in that nut compared to what it used to feel like. I need to go backwards just a hair. Sharp again. A little tiny bit more. Well, I'm sorry that you guys had to put up with all my talking through this video. It probably would have gone a lot faster if I would just shut up and just get the job done. But there was a lot of detail in this, and I wanted to explain as much as I could. And hopefully uh, this will help out somebody else who may have a problem with their nut or, you know, action height or intonation or something. And uh, next I'll be polishing this thing up a little bit, getting rid of the scuff marks that are on the back of it. And yeah, now I got another bass to play around with. I've been playing around, but I haven't been recording playing around. So thanks for sticking with me, and I uh, hope everyone has a good one. Catch you all later.